Samsung or Google? Google or Samsung? Which one is better at making the crowds disappear from this photo or making the dock larger in this photo? Let's do some testing. All of the new Galaxy S24 phones come with a new generative AI photo editing feature that lets you move around or remove objects and people from your photos. Basically, you fake something in or out of your photo to make it look a little better for social media, I suppose. But there's nothing novel about this. The Google Pixel 8 launched a couple of months ago, and with it came a new generative AI photo editing feature that looks pretty similar to this, because Samsung is using Google's AI engine to do its own magic. And yes, at first glance, the two features look pretty identical, just wrapped in a different coat of paint. You can even access them the same way. I open a photo in the gallery app on my S24, or in Google Photos on my Pixel 8, and I tap to edit. Then I look for the glowing star icon in the bottom left. That's where I can add a bit of pizzazz to my photos with generative AI. But that's where most of the similarities between the two phones stop, from the options they offer to the end result. A lot of it is different in pretty minor and pretty major ways. Let's start with the basics. A while ago, I took a nice colorful photo of a soap bubble and I wanna make it larger. Both phones will attempt to select the bubble if, or any other distinct shape or person if I just tap on it. Once I've selected the bubble, I can tap and hold on it in order to move it or resize it. And this works on both phones. Let's make the bubble big. I love that Samsung shows me guys here to keep things perfectly centered and aligned. Google doesn't. Both phones will take almost the same time to generate a result, but the S24 only gives me one image, whereas the Pixel 8 gives me four to choose from. In the case of the bubble, it doesn't make much of a difference, but you can imagine that it's nicer to have more options when you're trying to move or resize people in a photo with a complex background behind them. Because of the extra choices, this point goes to Google. I can tap to see the original photo and compare it on both phones. But since Google generates four images, it lets me zoom in to check all the details of each photo and pick between them. When I'm done, I just accept the changes and I can save the image as a copy. Samsung applies a watermark to the resulting image, Google doesn't. This point obviously goes to Samsung. Given how easy it is to manipulate reality with our phones, I think we really need a standard watermark for all generative AI photos on the web. I did this with many other photos. I made this crocodile larger as if it wasn't big and scary enough. I also made this duck ginormous. And then I made my husband a little smaller in this photo to put more emphasis on the gorgeous landscape behind him. I think both phones handle these situations pretty well. There's a bit of a halo around my husband's back where the AI had to fill in. But if I was just looking at the photo on my phone, I wouldn't be able to tell that it was manipulated in some way. The Galaxy S24 lets me do one thing that the Pixel 8 doesn't, which is to rotate whatever I have selected. And I have guides to help me align it perfectly. I had a lot of fun with this photo and then I made a GIF out of it. This point goes to Samsung, obviously. Say I want to erase people from this photo I took in La Samaritaine, a fancy mall in Paris. It gets crowded there and it's almost impossible to take a photo without people, shoppers and store attendants popping up in it. So let's see if AI can fix it. I can still tap on people to select them or manually draw around them to help the algorithm know what I want. This works on both phones and I can zoom in for more precision on both. But Samsung has an edge here if you have the Galaxy S24 Ultra and you use the S Pen for precise selection. I did notice, however, that Samsung doesn't like to select people or objects if there isn't too much contrast between them and what's around them. Take this person in the distance. No matter what I do, the S24 just doesn't let me select them. The Pixel 8 is fine with it. I've noticed this in multiple cases, so it's not one isolated incident. On the Pixel, I rarely had any problems forcing it to select something. On the S24, when it doesn't want, it just doesn't want. You cannot force it. All right, back to the mole photo. Since I'm doing multiple selections, I might make some mistakes. Samsung and Google handle these differently. On the S24, I tap a selected area to deselect it. On the Pixel 8, I undo my changes one by one, or I tap the minus button to manually deselect something. There are pros and cons to each method, I like Samsung's simplicity, but I think Google gives me way more control, especially if I'm trying to remove part of a larger selection. All right, I'm happy with this, so let's remove these people. I just tap arrays on the Pixel 8 to let the AI work its magic. On the S24, I have to tap and hold the selection first, then hit the eraser button. In general, I think the whole process of removing people and objects is easier and faster on the Pixel 8, so the point goes to Google. But I want to highlight here a big difference in the way Samsung and Google handle multiple edits. On the Pixel, every single time I move or remove something, I have to generate a new set of AI results, and then I can undo them or make more changes and generate another set of results on top of the first one. On Samsung, I have to make all of the modifications that I want first and then hit generate, 
And that's the final result. I can't undo or add more in this editing session. I have to open the generative AI feature again if I want to do more. I'm not sure which approach I like more personally. When I know exactly what kind of edits I want to make to a photo, Google's approach feels a little bit slow. It takes more time and it's generating more AI photos every single step of the way. And Samsung is faster in that case. But when I'm indecisive and I don't know exactly what I want, I think Google gives me more leeway to experiment with different edits and undo them when I don't want them. As for the results, things look a little bit different between the two. In this image, the S24 attempted to draw a hand when I deleted the glove, whereas the Pixel 8 just made everything fuzzy. Samsung's image isn't perfect, but I think it looks better at a glance. Here though, the S24 chose to replace the crowd of the Champs-Élysées with car light trails and traffic, essentially making the photo busier than it should be. Whereas the Pixel 8 nailed it, it traced the fence, drew more of the street and ground and made a more harmonious photo. And in this photo, both phones struggled to delete the reflection of another building on the skyscraper. The S24 did a better job filling in the glass on the upper part, but it decided to put a brick building on the bottom for some reason. The Pixel 8 tried to completely redraw the glass and failed with a lot of artifacts. And finally, both of them can get pretty creative when they need to fill in a big empty space. In general, I think I prefer Google's approach more. The results are more realistic, they blend in more, and there are always four of them, so I can pick whatever works for me in every situation. Plus, Samsung can get a bit crazy sometimes with its edits. So this point goes to Google. Now let's talk about all the distinct Gen AI features that either Google or Samsung offer, not both of them. First, the Google Pixel 8 lets me do a couple of things that aren't available on the Galaxy S24. I can change the sky and the AI will adapt the entire photo to fit the new look. So I can make a gloomy day look brighter or the other way around. And I can mimic the golden hour or add some water effect. I can even stylize the photo. Samsung doesn't have any of that, but it has a lot of options that aren't available on Google right now. I can rotate any full image up to 15 degrees in either direction, and the Galaxy S24 will fill in the blank. I'm struggling to find any real use case for this, even though it's super impressive, because most times I think it would be faster and easier to just rotate the image and crop it, even if that means losing a little bit of it. Not to mention a regular rotate and crop consume less resources than starting a generative AI process. I think this feature would be much more impressive if Samsung lets us also fix the skewed perspective of photos and then fill in the rest with generative AI. For now, the only time it would be handy is if I was trying to properly align a photo and I don't want to lose any detail around the corners and sides. The second feature the Samsung Galaxy S24 offers that isn't available on the Pixel is the ability to add objects and people from another photo on top of the photo that you're currently editing. So I can merge this cute and surprised kitten into this crocodile photo. The only issue is that I can't save the result immediately after. The generate button is grayed out, as you can see. So I have to make another edit before hitting generate. That seems like a bug to me, Samsung. There's no way adding kittens on top of other photos takes more than a few taps. Oh, and did you see how when I was trying to crop the cat out, I had more options available to me? Seriously, why can I snap to shape or manually select and deselect here, but not in the main gen AI photo editor interface? And finally, the Galaxy S24 offers more generative AI edits, but it hides those in the suggestions when you're trying to view a photo. I'm not sure why they're not visible in the main photo editor interface, but that's the case. One of these is removing the moire or moiré effect in photos. This smooths out any shading effect on displays and screens. The other option is to remove shadows and reflections and photos that have them. To be fair, I can do something similar on my pixel by just selecting the shadow, but I think it's easier and faster to have one button to fix it without having to go into menus and selections and options. And I'll still give this point to Samsung because it offers way more options and features than the Google Pixel 8 does. If you're keeping a tally, that's three points each for Samsung and for Google. I don't think we can declare a clear winner here because in general, Samsung is offering you more ways to mess up and to fix your photos, whereas Google is basically giving you a slightly more realistic result in the end. I think Samsung took Google's AI engine and made it its own by adding and removing some of the features. Some of the changes are positive, others are eh, not so much. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to follow Android Authority for all the latest Android news, reviews, comparisons and more.